Folks, welcome once again to Cooking with Charles. You all know me by now, I'm Charles. Tonight, folks, we have a great, great, great menu tonight. We're gonna have balsamic Alfredo chicken, and I have some leftover risotto right here. We're gonna make some deep fried risotto. It's called uh, arancina, if I pronounce it right. So, guys, go get, yourself, go get yourself a libation. I'm drinking a luscious Tisdale, about as luscious as your host is today. And uh, come on back, and we'll get cooking. See you in about 30 seconds, folks. Cooking with Charles is made possible by the generous donations of Sully Superette, the Goffstown Network. If you need a helping hand, they're there to lend that helping hand. If you can lend a helping hand, they can use your help. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am just taking care right now to cut up some chicken. I've got a, about a pound of boneless breast chicken, and I'm just gonna cut it up into some, you know, thin tenders here, because it'll cook a lot easier. So the first thing I mentioned is balsamic Alfredo chicken. So what do we need to make this? Well, folks, here are the goods you need to get. First things first, gonna get yourself some heavy cream. I got some right here. Okay, then you'll need some butter. A little bit right here. Some Parmesan cheese. Okay. And of course, balsamic vinegar, garlic to taste, and of course, chicken. All right. So, what am I doing? Well, I'm taking a nice, boneless, skinless breast of chicken. You can use whatever kind of cut you want. What I'm doing right now is I'm dressing this, which means I'm cutting off this piece. And what I do with this is I usually save this little piece. It's like a piece of little popcorn chicken. All right. I'll put that aside, and I'm going to cut that, and then I'm going to, you'll notice there's a vein of muscle right there, okay? We're just going to cut along that, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how they get chicken tenders. So we're just going to take this, and I'm cutting this in strips. I'm also cutting it in half, as you can see, because what I want to do is I want this to cook faster. I got some oil over here preheating, and I'm just going to hear that. That's a lovely sound. This one, a little thick. And we're just going to place all these right in here. Now, I want you to make sure you get your oil super, 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 super hot. Because we are putting in a bunch of chicken, and that's going to draw a lot of heat out of here. Whew. And be careful when you touch it that you don't touch your fingers to the oil because, well, that can burn you. <laughs> All right. Let's get some room here. Uh, this stuff is cooking up really quickly. So we're not going to have to let me drone on for too, too long as this stuff cooks. We will have to do some uh, movement around the pan a little bit as Wow, this is cooking up nicely. See, this is why you slice it thin, because you don't have to wait forever for things to cook. And besides, you look cool if you're cutting stuff on TV, so. All right, let that sit right there. This is gonna take a few minutes. You did, I did, you did see the way I put garlic to taste which is like you use fresh garlic, you can use powdered garlic. I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic powder. This can go right on top of the chicken. I also have, yeah, a little bit of sea salt. Again, I only use sea salt, or put it this way, 
I don't use like a Morton's iodized salt. I'll use kosher, I'll use sea, sea salt, I'll use Himalayan pink salt. Why? Because it's not chemicalized. They take everything out of the salt that you buy in the store, like the Morton's blue cylinders, and they put well, a lot of stuff in there that you don't want to eat besides salt, and they can get away with that. Sea salt, it's just sea salt. So hopefully you're not getting the seawater that was next to the nuclear reactor. <laughs> Mmm, just that little bit of salt and pepper making all the difference in here. All right, I'm going to move my thinner, smaller pieces out to the edge because they're pretty much cooked. I have some thicker pieces that I'm going to cut down because I don't want to take so long to cook. I can just cut right through there, butterfly that up, put that raw side down. It's on this one too. I'm only doing this because, well, time constraint. I want to get this show going. Okay, these will just take but a few more seconds. Yeah. Mm. So how you guys been? It's been a week, huh? Almost two weeks, I think, since my last show. All right, let all that sit. While that's working its magic, let me tell you about the magic of Charles, the magic of me, and how you can get this magic every day, any time of day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That's right, folks. You can watch me at your heart's content at Cooking with Charles M. on YouTube. That's the title of my YouTube channel. You can also email me with your concerns, your gripes, your likes at cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. Please email me. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, please check out my other past videos. You know, I've I got a bacon bomb meatloaf video on, the, on YouTube. It's got almost 10,000 views right now. It's a runaway smash viral sensation. At least in my mind it is. So anyway, on to the cooking. Mmm. Oh, wonderful. Smells going on in here. We got this chicken nicely browned. Perfect. Now, let me get a little plate here. We're going to take these off and put them aside because now we're going to start working on. Woo! These are hot little doggies. All right, now it's off to Alfredo land. Now, for this dish, if you're going to make your own Alfredo, first and foremost, you have to use heavy cream. Don't use half and half. Don't use milk. I'm not sure about light cream, but I do know you want to use heavy cream. Why? When we add the acid and the vinegar, it's going to curdle. So <coughs> I get about two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to put those right in there. And I'm going to take my tongs. I'm going to scrape the bottom of the pan here. Get all that flavor goodness out. Up from the bottom. Voila. Butter's in. It's getting nice and foamy, bubbling up nicely. I'm going to use about a cup of heavy cream, which is about half of this. Done. Now, I'm going to let this, stir this, going to let it simmer for a second. See how quick and easy this dish is turning out, folks? And we're going to use about a quarter cup of, we got Romano cheese. I know I put down Parmesan cheese, but you can use whatever you want. You know what? I'm going to put a little more than a quarter cup because I love cheese. Done. This is a Alfredo. We're going to turn the heat down a little bit because we don't need this on high. I'm just going to, this was on high. We're going to turn it down pretty much off. Maybe a little simmer. And this is Alfredo sauce, folks. 
basic, basic, basic. You know, I saw how easy that was. Now listen, if you just like to watch cooking shows because you're a voyeur, you don't like to actually cook, you can use this, Prego, home style Alfredo sauce from a jar. This is what my wife uses when she cooks. And that's okay, whatever you want to use. Now, for this dish, I am going to use about, yeah, we're gonna do about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar now. It's gonna give it a nice, deep, rich color, like the balsamic vinegar. And then that color is going to dissipate a little bit. Oh, there we go. Look at that. And we're gonna simmer this. Mmm, folks, this smells wonderful. Now, what can you serve this with? Well, anything you want. Anything you want. You can put this over pasta, over rice, or just on the side like this. Because all we're doing with this is glazing. I got some left over. You could adjust your own measurements for what you have. Because I got about a pound and a third of meat here. But voila, folks, huh? That is done. Hmm? So before we go to break, I'm going to have to, oh, you know what? I'm going to wait till everything's done. But there you go, folks. Balsamic Alfredo chicken. And my God, how quick was that? And how much is your family going to love you when they sit down and you made this? Because it smells wonderful. Oh. So, tell you what, folks. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to start off with our deep fried balls. <laughs> Aaron Cheetah, folks. Aaron Cheetah. So come on back. We'll, about two minutes, we'll get cooking again. And not only are we going to get cooking, we're getting cooking with good looking. That's me. See you in a few. Hi, I'm Charles Minnick, host of GTV Smash Hit, Cooking with Charles. I've teamed up with the Goffstown Network to tell you about their outreach and food pantry programs. The mission of the Goffstown Network is to provide for the hunger-related needs of our neighbors in Goffstown and their surrounding communities. Founded with the governing principles that no person should go hungry and every person deserves our care. The Goffstown Network serves the area by providing food and other services on an emergency short-term basis. This spirit of community and mutual caring is extended to anyone in Goffstown, Dunbarton, and New Boston. Normal hours of operation are Wednesday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., and Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. Welcome back, guys. You know what? I did have a little taste during the break, and that gets a total thumbs up. Now, before we get on to the next segment, this dish, even though it's Alfredo, you know what? We're flavoring the chicken. We don't have to drink the sauce like it's from a wine goblet, okay? So, yeah, we're using heavy cream. We're using butter, but we're using it in moderation. So, bear that in mind. You're not drinking the sauce, and if you make that with just vegetables and no pasta, you're ahead of the game. Anyway, on to our next dish. What do you do with leftover risotto besides eat it? Well, you make arancina di riso. Uh, arancini, I should say. What is that? That's leftover Italian rice. We all know risotto. It's this. It's rice. Well, this is how we're going to make our dish. So let's get the goods going, folks. Mmm. Oh, that is tasty. All right. First and foremost, for the goods, we need two eggs, because that's going to hold everything together. And of course, we need risotto, which my wife made last night. Uh, we also need some Parmesan cheese, which you know we have from the previous dish. And we need some breadcrumbs, my favorite panko, and some mozzarella cubed. So guess what, folks? We have all that right here. So let's get going. This, folks, was actually risotto made last night. I pulled, I pulled a Huckleberry Finn Tom Sawyer 
uh, painting project with my wife last night. <laughs> I didn't feel like standing on the, over the stove, stirring, adding, because, you know, risotto takes some time, not a lot of effort, but some time. And uh, so I said, I'm going to teach you how to do it. So she made this risotto. And my God, it's really darn good. So all I'm doing here is I am just adding some breadcrumbs to this. Okay. And then we're going to add some Parmesan cheese, about a quarter cup. I don't need to do too, too much though, because I have Parmesan cheese in the risotto from last night. A little cakey there. Okay. Now, you can do this a few different ways. I could flour this, egg wash it, roll it in the breadcrumbs. So I get some breadcrumbs on the inside. And uh, what I'm going to do is put the whole thing right in there. Whole thing with the two eggs. I got about two cups of this risotto. Okay, so the egg is going to go all the way through this. And I'm going to just pour off this extra egg. Because that's just soupy, soupy, soupy. We want this to be a little bit on the dry side, but it's not going to be totally dry because, well, it is, you know, it is eggs. All right, now let's give our hands a little wipe here. And that's done. That towel's done. Now for a mozzarella. Don't usually have cubes hanging around the house, but I got a five-year-old and I got a seven-year-old at home. So I have cheese sticks, which are made out of mozzarella. So that, folks, is what we're going to be using tonight. Get our oil heating. Now, this, this dish originated, they said, about 12th century Sicily. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what it said on Wikipedia. <laughs> All right, I'm hoping to get about, I don't know how many I'm going to get out of here. Um, if you have these out and about at your favorite Italian eatery, you may see these are round balls. Uh, you can make them round, you can make them, well, any way you want, actually. I'm going to make mine a little flat because I'm not going to pour a whole bunch of oil to make it Uh, what should I call it? Like three inches deep and to totally submerge these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few up ahead of time, make them like little patties. So I'm going to take a little bit in my hand, going to put a little that mozzarella right in the middle. Actually, I'm going to put it right there. All right, this is going to be good, folks, let me tell you. In the case I didn't tell you before, we are having a Merlot tonight. It's a very luscious, velvety Merlot, just like your host. Mm, these are going to be wonderful. It's made by Tisdale, the Merlot that is not your host. And that is a Gallo family of wines. We all know Gallo. Ernest, Julio, those hard knock, hard scrabble immigrants came over here and started a multi-billion dollar winery. Good for them. All right. Ooh. See, the good thing about putting the egg in with everything is, well, the egg's in with everything. Yeah, you know what? I could have used a little more risotto, a little less egg, because I am getting on the soupy side here. But heck, you know what, if I just add a little bit of this to that, it's going to dry it up a little bit. Hopefully not too much, but it makes it a lot more workable. Okay, now, more breadcrumbs. Right there. You know what? I'm just going to use the whole can. 
There we go. Breadcrumbs are cheap. And folks, I have never made this before, so you know what? Into the oil we go. Those are not, that oil's not as hot as I would have liked. Hmm. Breadcrumbs. It's messy. I get you're getting I'm getting stuff everywhere, but yeah. You know what? We'll all live in this kitchen. Speaking of living in this kitchen, did you guys know there is another show on this station that I share the studio with? Another cooking show. That's right. Local guy named Guy Trino does a great job with his show called Culinary Classics. Um, God, he teaches you how to make some very classic, classic dishes and he does it in a very entertaining way so i highly suggest you check your local listings and you check out guy tino's show culinary classics you're going to be so happy you and i am going to be kicking that all night long but let me get my hands clean here bear with me one second all right now while that's browning up i'm going to do a little clean up here because god it's messy but you know, I'm going to drink first. Oh, you know, I should have drank first <laughs> before I did all this. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Always in your own kitchen, cook as you, I mean, clean as you cook. You know, clean as you go. Because, well, when dinner is ready, it's going to make it so much easier. Okay? If you can just sit down and relax with your guests, your loved ones, or whoever it may be. All right, let's see how these are doing. Uh, they're browning. There we go. Taking a little longer than I thought and would have liked, but hey, we're getting there. It's the stove, guys, you know? I'm telling you, we need a benefactor at the station to give us a brand new stove. This thing's 30 years old, we modify it. I take my life into my own hands every time I cook for you with this stove. You never know when it's gonna pop and zap me because it has happened, but I'm such, such a professional, you don't know it's happening. <laughs> but seriously folks, if anybody has a stove to donate, please give, a, give me a call or email me, I should say. I don't want you calling me at all hours in the night, but uh, email me, you know my email. It's cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. Um, we'll make arrangements to Pick it up for you. Plus, my show's a charity. <laughs> so it's a tax write-off for you. Think about that. Hmm. And if it's a sub-zero Viking stove, even better. Oh, there's my email. Perfect. See? Now you have to email me saying you've got a free stove you want to deliver. Oh, let's just see how these are. Looking good, looking good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now, what I should have added was a little bit of this onion powder to the breadcrumbs, but you know what? Because we're deep frying them, it's not going to matter. This is going to stick on it anyway. And a little bit of garlic powder. Ah, yes. And folks, Cooking with Charles uses Spice Classic brand spices. Why? Because they're really good and they're actually really inexpensive. I don't know where you are, but this cost me about a dollar to a dollar fifty. Hey, it's worth it. Okay. Mmm. That is looking divine. Yeah. Take this one out. What we're doing is just, just doing enough to get a nice crust on the outside. Because with that crust on the outside, you know it's going to be nice and gooey goodness on the inside. All right, let me give this a quick. 
All right, folks, well, you know what? We have two done, which means we're going to do some plating. Yes, we are. We're going to take some of this lovely balsamic chicken, balsamic Alfredo chicken, and just so you folks are aware, I have never made this dish before in my life. Actually, either of these dishes. I've never made either of these. There's a first for everything. I was uh, tooling around the internet the other day, looking up food porn, and uh, oh, balsamic Alfredo chicken popped up. And I had to, had to, had to check that out. And after I read about it and saw the pictures, I had to get me some. And see, folks, we're not using a whole lot of this sauce on it, so don't be afraid to make your own Alfredo sauce, okay? Because it's just really not that, not that much. And I'm not going to get fat, by the way. Check it out. I went to the doctor the other day. I'm about eight pounds lighter than I was this time last year, so I'm eating Alfredo. Oh, I'm going to take that one first. It's a nice golden brown. Yeah, going to cook these up real nice. Mm. All right. First things first, folks. Let's eat. Let's check this out. Oh. Look at this. Mmm. Guys, I have not tasted anything this good in a long time. The balsamic brings so much of that Alfredo sauce. Mmm. Oh my God, this is so incredibly good. You're going to love this. And see how easy it was to make? Mm. I think it was 10 minutes. Mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Wow. That is a great dish, folks. But wait, there's more. We have the arancini. Gooey, gooey cheese on the inside. Mmm. Mmm. Hot gooey cheese on the inside. Oh, Arancini de Rosa. Oh, Rizzo, you are my new favorite food girlfriend. That is awesome. Wow. Folks, a couple of incredible dishes here today. And you saw how easy they were to make. Now this, arancini, you don't have to use risotto if you don't want to. If you have some leftover rice at home, God, it's a great way. It's a great way to use your leftovers, you know? I can't think of a better way to use your leftovers than to repurpose them, like this dish right here. Oh, you know what's also really good? Mmm. Arancini de Rizzo with a balsamic Alfredo sauce. Wow, guys, we did it again. Another great meal, another great 30 minutes together. So I'll tell you what, tune in next week. What are we going to make? I don't know. I'll have to wait till the weekend before the show to figure it out. But you know it's going to be something good because it's something that we're going to make together. So until then, be happy and cook for the ones you love, folks. Take care. Have a great week.